Hi guys, this is Andrew with Headphones.com, and today we're going to do a comparison between the Hi-Fi Man Sundara and the Hi-Fi Man HE560 right here. Now, both of these headphones have gone through changes over the years. Both can be had for around $300, uh, depending on where you look. And so I wanted to give an account of how they both perform and stack up to one another in 2023. So before getting started, I just want to acknowledge Hi-Fi Man has been releasing a ton of headphones. It's just like headphone after headphone after revision of a headphone, including all of the versions of the Ananda, both Stealth and Nano, the Sphenar, the Aria Organic, and the Audivina as well. So get ready for those. And I promise, as soon as I get access to the new Odyssey MM100, I will review it. I know you guys are asking for it. It's just that we don't have that one in yet. In any case, as usual, nobody's paid me to say anything in particular about these headphones, and all thoughts and opinions here are my own. Now, this HE560 is the V4 from Adorama, and as of filming this right now, it's currently only available used for around $300, uh, which is also around the same price as what the Sandara can be found at as well. And I just want to make it clear that this isn't the V2 that I think is still available there. And for those who've been wondering, yes, the HE560 V4 is the headphone you've seen me use as a daily driver for the past month on various live streams. Of course, at this point you might be thinking, wait a sec, you're covering a headphone that I can't buy new? And the answer is yes, yes I am. Because I just happen to find it interesting. Let me tell you about them. This stuff comes and goes, and if it's available once again in the future, you'll have this video to come back to as a resource. Now, for the acoustic design, both of these are open back, single-sided planar magnetic headphones, which means there's a magnet array on just one side instead of two. For the HE560 here, you can see it uses the common cup design that a number of hi fi headphones have, so they resemble this one, including the HE400 SE and the HE6 SE V2, so you may have seen this one before. These also have the newer style headband, which I do think is an improvement over the previous designs, even though it might not look like anything special. The Sundar's headband, when you uh, extend it, it scrapes the inside of the yoke, while the attachment point on the HE560 headband is particularly rickety. Uh, so, you know, on, on both fronts, the build, it's not really that great but it is functional. With that said, I personally love the way the Sundara looks uh, and the cup and housing itself does feel nice, but the HE560 has better mechanical design in my opinion because it has some cup swivel uh, and will likely be more accommodating of a wider range of different heads. Uh, that was sort of my, my big complaint with the comfort on the Sundara, even though for the most part it is reasonably comfortable. Uh, it's just that I find the HE560 to be more comfortable due to the extra cup swivel that it has. The pads are also different between the two. The Sundara uses the 2020 pad or what I'm calling the 2020 pad and this is where they made a revision uh, to improve reliability. I'm told that the older ones had a tendency to come apart where the leather connects to the mounting ring which isn't a great thing to have happen. The HE560 pad instead is the same as the ones you'll find on the HE400 SE or the HE X4 with the slightly thicker feeling uh, surface to it. For power requirements, you'll find that impedance and sensitivity seem to vary a bit, and they aren't always necessarily what's indicated on the spec sheet, but they are kind of in the ballpark. In both cases, while the impedance is low, they also don't have all that high sensitivity. So I'm going to recommend an amplifier for them, but you also don't need anything crazy for these by any means. Now, let's get into the sound quality, and I'm going to give you the gist of it right away, and then we can talk about all the super fun, nerdy deep dive stuff. The HE560 is a bit more clarity focused and better for jazz and acoustic music, while the Sundara is a little bit more versatile for a wider range of genres, uh, and not as picky about the recording. That's, that's basically the gist of what you need to know here. So it's not really that one is outright better than the other, they both have their strengths, and I think it just matters what you're going after. Like if you want more clarity, then you would go with the HE560, for example. But now I'm going to dump a whole pile of information on you when it comes to these headphones. Here I'm showing you the frequency response of both of these done on the VNK5128, which is currently the most advanced headphone measurement system available. But I'll also link the Gross data below in the description for those who are more familiar reading measurements done on the Gross system. In this case, I'm using diffuse field with a 10 decibel slope for the target. But just know that if you prefer a brighter sound signature, you may find an 8 decibel tilt to be more your kind of thing. And for a warmer sound signature, you may prefer 12 decibels. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at this stuff. We'll have preference boundaries for this stuff eventually to help show that. In any case, let's start with the bass, and I want to highlight a really clever thing they did with the Sundara with a trade-off. So the Sundara drops off a bit in the sub bass below 30 hertz, but you can see it's also generally elevated over the HE560's more flat bass extension that does go all the way down to 20 hertz. And if you take the pad off the Sundara, you'll see that there's a small gap here between the driver and the side of the housing. 
When open back front ceiling headphones like these are coupled to the side of the head, as in worn in normal conditions, and fit in a sealed manner around your ear without any gaps or leaks, this is what normally gives you full bass extension all the way down to 20 hertz. When that system is broken with an air gap, you lose the flat bass extension and the bass will drop off abruptly below the driver's resonance frequency. If the driver has heavy damping, you won't actually see the resonance frequency, but you will see the drop off when you break the seal. By contrast, when the driver is undamped or only minimally damped, you'll actually see the bass boost up at its resonance frequency, followed then by a drop off below that. And the resonance frequency is super low in the bass for both of them. And they also have very minimal damping as well. And this is why for anyone who owns a Hi-Fi Man planer or has heard one, you'll know that if you're wearing the headphones and you kind of pull them away from your head a little bit to you know take them off or put them on, if you have music playing during this, you'll notice the bass actually increase. The bass goes up as you do this. Now, ordinarily this effect is due to how the pads seal to the side of the head. But with the Sindara, the gap exists here between the driver and the housing. So even if you get a perfect seal around your ear, you still get a slight bass boost at the driver's resonance frequency and then followed by a drop off. Now, because the gap here is small, this effect is subtle, but it's one way of getting an acoustic bass boost in an open back planar magnetic headphone. And it is noticeable, making the Sindara come across a bit bassier than the HE560. Now, you could of course also get that on the HE560 with EQ and also get full sub bass extension as well, which is technically better but very little musical information exists below 30 hertz, and in most cases, you probably wouldn't notice the difference. Also, most people aren't gonna be doing EQ, so I just think it's a cool way of lifting the lower frequencies acoustically. Now, if for some reason you do really want to get that extension all the way down to 20 hertz, and I don't recommend doing this, you could seal up the gap between the driver and the housing on the Sandara. So for example, if you seal it with blue tack or putty, and again, I don't recommend doing this, it does give full bass extension. Here, I've done that, and you can see how it looks once I've sealed up the driver gap. And the reason why I don't recommend doing this is that it'll actually be perceived as having less bass for the majority of your music. Because even though this now goes down all the way to 20 hertz, the overall driver resonance boost isn't there. Of course, that's just the bass. Let's talk about the mids. The HE560 has some wibbles throughout the mids, uh, and this stuff isn't exactly audible, but it does make it recognizable as an HE560 driver in the measurements. They all tend to have this. Also, not unlike some of the larger egg-shaped egg hi-fi mens that you might see as well. Then there's also a stronger dip in the mids at around 1.5K for the HE560, but also more energy in the lower treble. So the effect here is that you lose a little bit of body for certain tones, but it's also still very clear sounding for the resonant overtones. And this is also why I say the HE560 is the more clarity focused headphone between the two, and that I think is often desirable for acoustic music. At the same time, if you listen to a lot of more aggressive music, like say heavy metal or rock, sometimes that extra clarity can be a little bit too much, like electric guitars can sound a little bit harsh and biting by comparison to how they sound on the, on the Sandara, which is a little bit more relaxed in that region. I will say for the general sound signature, I do find the Sandara to be a little bit more uh, neutral overall, but as I mentioned, if you're doing EQ, uh, if you're planning on doing EQ anyways, the HE560 has a little bit of that extra sub bass capability due to it not having the air gap between the driver and the housing. So for the overall tonal balance, I'm going to give the win to the Sandara by just a little bit, uh, but it's not like the HE560 is really lacking in that regard either. Now, as far as their subjective technicalities goes, this is where I actually think the HE560 wins by a hair. They're very similar for most aspects, but I find the HE560 to be just ever so slightly better at representing these smaller gradations of volume or the finer little nuances in the music. And it's also a little bit more laterally well-defined, and this could also be due to it having a little bit more uh, energy in the upper mids and lower treble, along with that dip at around 1.5k as well. That has a sort of widening effect to things. But importantly, both are great at image separation and distinction. Um, and that's really what these headphones are all about for me. Uh, like when listening to vocal harmonies, for example, you can really hear each line extremely clearly and well separated from other things that are going on. And that's really what I love about them. So here's how I think about these two headphones in a nutshell for sound quality specifically, since I really think that the other factors like ergonomics uh, are probably more significant. Like I think that's actually probably what would determine which one I would buy. But for sound quality, if you're not gonna EQ, I think the Sundara is likely to be preferred by most people. But if you do EQ, technically you can do a little bit more with the HE560, but it's also a fairly negligible difference. Like it's not quite as versatile without EQ, 
But if you're the kind of person who loves to dial it in just how you like it, the HE 560 would be ever so slightly better, in my opinion. But in either case, for around $300, I think these are both a fantastic option, and they're definitely competitive. And regardless of which one you end up owning, I think it's a solid choice. The closest competition around this price point, in my view, comes from the Sennheiser HD 600, which does have some strengths over these. In particular, it has a little bit more natural sounding timbre to it, but it's also not quite as flexible for the bass since it rolls off a bit. And for a warmer alternative, of course, I'm gonna recommend the HD 650 or HD 6XX, which has similar strengths and weaknesses to the HD 600. So which one would I choose? Well, personally, I would lean a little bit towards the HE 560 because I do EQ and this one has cup swivel and so it, it's a better fit for my giant audiophile head. That's really all it comes down to for me as a choice between these two headphones. But if you have a more normal sized head, then the Sundara is at least gonna be a little bit more of a versatile option for you. Anyways, that's basically all I wanted to say about these two headphones. I love them both. And of course, if you want to see more information on these, uh, definitely check out the forum thread linked in the description. Uh, that's where I've posted the graphs. Uh, and then of course, check out our Discord, also linked in the description. And check out the audio files up on headphones.com. That's where we do all of our written material as well. And that does it for me in this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.